Tonight is the 177th anniversary of the Great Fire of 1835. The fire of 1835 devastated our city. It started in a warehouse near Wall Street when a gas pipe burst, spewing fumes on a nearby coal stove. It didn't take long before the blaze blew off the roof of the building, and the buildings were so tight downtown that within 15 minutes, 50 of the buildings were caught on fire, and it wasn't done yet. Several hundred buildings burned that night. 10% of our city vanished in one night, December 16th and 17th of 1835. Philip Holm, famous diarist, former mayor of New York at the time, describes the fire as the most awful calamity which ever visited these United States. The fire, this is unbelievable, the fire was unstoppable <coughs> because we had no water. And the water that we did have was frozen. It was frozen in the wells. The East River was frozen. They had to break through the ice on the East River to get the limited amount of water that they were trying to use to put out the fire. It was minus 17 degrees that night with gale force winds. It devoured most of the, of the town below Wall Street. Only way they could stop it from moving above Wall Street was to basically destroy the buildings north of Wall Street to sort of stop the fuel that the fire was using. It was 14 acres of flames, 14 acres of flames that did not go out for two weeks. Wow is right. New York City needed water in 1835. It needed water not only to put out fires, it needed water to assure pure water for the city, for the residents, and another night we'll talk about this, to stop the cholera epidemics, which had wiped out the fire department. Another class, another time. <laughs> At first, the team of engineers that looked for a water source, they went to New Jersey. They looked at the Passaic River. They went up to the Bronx. They looked at the Bronx River. But finally, when they went up to Westchester, 40 miles away, they found the Croton River, selected it because it could provide the most water and the cleanest water. So fine. They find the Croton River. Now all they have to do is get water to travel 41 miles from the Croton Dam to New York City. How do you do that? Well, they designed a 41-mile stream that ditch diggers, masons, and other laborers carved into the landscape. They designed a river of fresh water, and it was powered by gravity. 41 miles of water, no pumping stations. Unbelievable. The water flowed in a pipe in, a, in an underground brick line tunnel that was eight feet by eight feet. Now, they had a problem. They had to get over the Harlem River. How are they going to do that? They built High Bridge up at 170th Street in the Bronx. High Bridge is still there. It's 138 feet above the Harlem River. Think the height of the New York Stock Exchange. Think the height of the Unisphere in Flushing Meadows, Corona. It is our city's oldest surviving bridge, and it was bringing water to New York. The water traveled for 22 hours from the Croton Dam over High Bridge before it reached three reservoirs. One of them right down the street, now the site of the New York Public Library. The second reservoir, visible to all joggers up in Central Park, now called the Jacqueline Onassis Lake, no longer a reservoir, that was the second reservoir. The third reservoir is now the Great Lawn in Central Park. They finished the Croton Aqueduct in five years. On October 14, 1842, it was one of New York State's greatest engineering achievements and New Yorkers turned out to celebrate their fresh water supply. At that point, it was the largest procession in the city. It's the procession to celebrate the water stretched 100 city blocks. Church bells rang, cannons were fired, banners, flags decorated the buildings. But the centerpiece of the whole thing was a fountain in City Hall Park with a 50 
foot plume of Croton water, and everybody was cheering the water. It was unbelievable. I feel I was there. <laughs> Seven years after the worst fire in our city's history, New York had made a major step in providing a source of water to put out future fires. Within five years after that, right, hundreds of new buildings were built. Large stone and brick structures replaced those destroyed warehouses. Home reports in his diary, the district was rebuilt with more splendor than before. You see, in times of disaster, and this is to out our calendar, reminds us we return, we, we turn to the STEM discipline for solutions. To fortify our city against the next hurricane, teams of engineers and scientists are considering construction of dunes, jetties, levees, they're even thinking about cultivating oyster beds along the coastline. 177 years ago, we faced devastation, <laughs> as we did six weeks ago. We solved it then. We can certainly solve it now. Inventing the future is what we do. In the past, it was getting water to put out a fire. Today, it's facing the challenge of global warming, making sure that the next hurricane does not devastate our city like the last one did. Thank you very much.